Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to check RAM size and memory usage in Linux. So th this is pretty easy. All you have to use is the free command. So you can say free dash H and that's going to give you your memory usage in um, in uh, human readable units. And um, you now we're, we're also going to show you how to check the physical RAM hardware information in just a sec. But let's go over the free command first. Now, one thing to note is uh, if you, if you just do free like this, it's going to give you, um, I guess, just bytes. Whereas uh, if you do free dash M, it's going to give it to you in megs. And H will just give you human readable, which in some cases it's megs, in some cases it's gigs. Most Here it's all gigs, but if it were under a gig, it's going to give it to you in megs. Um, so things to, j just so you understand this output, I'm going to go over this real quick. So total RAM 31, it's actually 32 gigs. It, it, but it, it just rounds it. Um, anyways, used is 5.1 gigs, free is 16 gigs, um, shared 3.1, buffer cache is 9.4, and available is 22. So even though free is only 16, we actually have uh, 22 available because they're buffered cached RAM. This is just being used by the system for buffering and caching since it's free, it may as well use it. Um, so it's making use of it, but if you need that RAM for a, an application or something, it's it's going to be able to take it. And so that that's not, you know, just because uh, j just because th th this will actually take away from what it shows as your free RAM, but um, you, you you actually have more. So um, you know, j just worth being aware of. Now, um, swap space. Uh, we we have two gigs of swap space. We're probably not going to really need that. Um, used is zero, um, free is two gigs. So that's it. We're, so we're basically not using swap space, but we have it. And um, yeah, that, that's basically it. Um, j you know, j just worth uh, you know being aware of the output. So that's how you check your memory usage. Um, we're going to show you some other ways to check memory usage too. But right now, let's jump into uh, yeah. There are a bunch of other commands that you can use. Um, like top and VM stat and so on, but for now let's uh, let's look at the hardware information. So let's clear this out, and we're, we're going to say DM. We're going to use DMI decode. And if you've watched some of my other videos, you saw I use this to show other information, like to, to check your system board and, and other things. Now, just DMI decode by itself is going to give you way. Let's see here. It's going to give you more, way more information than you could possibly need, and I should. I would actually have to zoom out to really be able to see all of this. And it's still not going to fit on my screen, but anyways, that's that's it gives you information about all your hardware on your system, anything you could even think of. So um, really, what we want to do is we're going to say DMI decode dash dash type memory. So here it's going to give us information about our memory devices. So this is still actually a lot of information. Um, I'm going to try zooming out just a little bit. All right, so this gives us a lot. Um, let's just maximize this. So physical memory array, and you'll see each memory device here. So this this should be an actual DIM. Um, so you can see like the bank locator, bank three. Um, I'm, I'm gonna just zoom back in because we don't need to look at these all individually. Um, so this for, for a given device, um, so you can see all of the different uh, memory devices I have in my system. And you can see the bank that they're installed in, bank two versus like bank three. It'll it'll show you what channel it's on, um, the form factor, the size of this DIM, um, data width, uh, total width, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, it'll, you, you can check the speed, the manufacturer, the serial number, asset tag. I'm not sure the asset tag necessarily makes a huge difference with this. But um, what, what, what else do we have? Um, configured memory speed, which should be the same as the actual memory speed. Um, doesn't know the voltage. It doesn't know the max min voltage, but it knows the configure, configured voltage. So that's it. That's basically all the information about my installed RAM. And uh, let's see here. What, what else can we look up? OK, actually, wor worth noting. Um, so let's see here. One, one, one interesting thing to point out. Um, so you'll notice that this has 16 gigs of RAM, and I actually have 32 gigs installed on this specific system. 
Now, uh, this this device, this is actually just this is just a slot where you can insert a dim. But um, here's a nut, and this one actually has a dim because you can see it's populated with information about the speed, the manufacturer, and so on. Now, this bank up here, it gives you information about the channel and and whatnot, but everything else is not specified because there's no no RAM installed in this slot. I, I only have two, uh, two sticks of RAM in, installed in this system, each 16 gigs. So like this is 16 gigs and the other one's gonna be 16 gigs for a total of 32. So this is empty. Um, this one is another 16 gig stick and this one is also empty. So you have four memory devices, two of them are installed and two of them are not installed. So I could actually install a couple more 16 gig sticks to get a total of, uh, of 64 gigs of RAM, which would be kind of nice. I almost kind of want to do that, but I really don't need it for what I'm using this for. 64 gigs total. Now these below, these are just the individual DIMMs shown here. Um, this above shows me information for the, I, I guess the physical memory array. Um, so this is just the part of the system board that handles memory and, uh, you know, which is why it specifies the maximum capacity and stuff. Um, anyways, um, that, that's about it for hardware information. Um, I actually, there's one more command I wanted to cover for hardware information. So let's zoom back in here and, uh, just so you can see the text a little bit more easily in the video. And there's another command LSHW to list hardware. So again, sudo, and we're using sudo for all these because it needs access to the hardware. Um, LSHW dash class memory. And, um, okay, there we go. That, yeah, the output got a little bit messed up for a, a minute there. All right, this actually is probably better off uh, if I zoom out for this. All right, so similar to DMI decode gives you a ton of information. Um, this is actually a little bit less, a little bit um, structured, a little bit nicer actually. Well, may maybe not. I mean, this isn't bad up here, but um, I don't know, somehow this just looks neater. Um, anyways, yeah, so, so we can see here, um, system memory, uh, physical ID, um, you know, on the, on the system board size 32 gigs. So it doesn't tell us the max, like the DMI decode command did, but, um, or, or does it, uh, let's see if we look up here, firmware info about our firmware capabilities, etc., etc. tells us how much, uh, how much RAM we have total, um, tells us about the slots. So this is one slot with nothing in it. It's a slot with a RAM stick in it. Gives us info about the RAM stick. A lot of the same info from the DMI decode command. Empty slot and a full slot. So gives us info about our four slots. And it also gives us some information about caching. So this is kind of nice too. So caches on the system. I believe these are CPU caches. Um, maybe, I'm not sure if these would reside in the CPU or on the system board. Probably at least some of these on the system board. They're different levels of caches. Um, so that's all fine and great, um, I guess related to the Canon Lake architecture. I anyways, um, so that's the LSHW command. If you're not finding info in one of these, you might find it in the other. Um, so that that's all fine and great. Now let's talk about um, additional commands we might use to, to monitor our memory. So one place you can look is in the proc file system. So let's clear this out, zoom in a bit anyways, and uh, we're, we're going to look in proc mem info. So cat proc, oops, proc mem info, and you don't need root access for this. So, all right, this gives us a ton of information just jump, dumped out here about like um, virtual memory, memory pages, and all sorts of other stuff about memory usage. Now, we, we can see um, mem total, 32 gigs, memory free, memory available and so on and so forth, buffers, cached, swap. Uh, this is probably where the tool free is getting its information. Um, now, if you wanna see the actual amount of memory used, you can just rep mem total. And um, all right, so mem total, you know what, rep dash I, I bet there's some capital letters in there. Mem total, okay. So, yeah, memory total, and this is what we get if you only want that number. So if you want to 
put that in script. I mean, you could use the free command or you could grep it out of here. It, it doesn't matter. Um, anyways, let's let's try the vm stat command. So vm stat dash s, and this is going to give us some information about memory too. A lot of the same stuff: pages being swapped in and out, CPU context switches, boot time, forks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Total memory used, used active, all the same stuff we already saw. Just another command that you can uh, use to get this VM stack gives you tons of other stuff depending on the options you use, but this will just dump out you know some information about your memory really quick. Now, um, and that I think VM stat actually deserves its own video and own guide, so maybe we'll do that in an upcoming video um, potentially. Another really common command looking at system performance is top. Let's just run top right now, and we see our top. Uh, you know our, our top processes, um, the memory they're using, the CPU they're using. They're using. Um, notice FFmpeg is using a ton of CPU and memory. You know compared to everything else right now. Reason FFmpeg is using it is uh, that is actually what's uh, that that's actually what I'm using. You can see that in the bar over here. Um, I'm actually using Voco Screen, a screen screen recording software which actually uses FFmpeg on the back end. Now there's actually a newer version of uh, Voco Screen that Voco Screen NG that I've installed, but um, I might start using that. But for now, Voco Screen's been working great, and I'm going to stick with it. So Voco Screen uses FFmpeg on the back end, and that's what you're seeing here, FFmpeg. So it's it's really busy because that's what I'm using to record my screen for this video right now as I speak. Um, anyways, that's the top command. Um, gives you some stats like about the CPU tasks. Uh, you know, memory and swap, the same things that, that uh, the free command gave you, except this is, uh, you know, in real time. So that's all fine and great and everything. Now, um, you might want to sort by memory rather than CPU or whatever else. So you can press Shift M, and that's going to sort by memory first, uh, which is still getting, giving us similar results because, uh, you know, the thing using the most memory is the same as what was using the most CPU. and um, but it does give us some different things at the top here. It gives us this nice little bar showing memory usage and swap usage, which is zero. Um, what else? Let's, uh, yeah, so that's that. Um, we can hit Q to quit, or we'll just control C out of it, clear it out, whoops, okay. Yeah, so uh, Q to quit if you don't have caps locks on, that works. Um, anyways. Clear that and run. Let, let's see if we have the x, the inxi command. So we have this installed already. If you don't have it installed, you could say sudo apt install inxi to install it. But um, any case, this gives you some nice useful info: CPU, kernel, and storage. Um, it t tells a little bit about the CPU in use, um, and the speeds and stuff. Um, your kernel, it does give memory info right here. <clears throat> so use memory used and mem memory total um, and the percentage <clears throat> gives it to you in a nice compact view. So you see a bunch of info about your system, your shell, your procs, your storage. Um, so this is all, all nice and everything. Um, do I really have that much storage? Um, all right, so I have a terabyte. I have a couple, so I'm not sure where it's getting this this from because I have a couple one terabyte drives. Maybe you know what this is. This is total storage for the system. I have an external drive with two terabytes attached right now. So I have I have a SATA drive. I have a SATA SSD, an NVMe SSD, and an external USB drive. Total is four gig four terabytes. So technically I kind of do have four terabytes on the system, which I guess it just rounds down to this amount. Um, any case, so that's a neat little command to have. Um, just, you know, an extra thing to show you. Now let's see if we have GNOME system monitor on here. You know, a graphical tool just, just for completeness, just to, you know, cover more things in this video, I guess. I generally don't use the graphical tools, but you might want to. GNOME system monitor. All right. 
let's open this up. Um, this will show you resources. Um, let's see, it's showing us file systems now. And this, is, this might be a little hard to see because it's not zoomed in. I don't think I can zoom this in. All right, resources. All right, this is gonna give you CPU and memory. And there we go. We can see the graph is starting to come. That, that's actually pretty nice. I, I like this. The, I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm usually using command line tools, but this looks pretty nice. Um, that is, that's, yeah, it looks like the RAM is pretty steady here. I, I could just fire up a VM or something and have the RAM spike. But um, that is a, a shockingly stable line for memory usage. And um, let's see, network history, it's showing my network usage. That's interesting too. Uh, but, but, the, the, but the coolest looking thing is I, I can actually see all of my eight cores here um, individually with different colors. That, that is a really cool looking graph. That, that I really like, that's pretty cool. Um, I wanna see if I can make my network spike. Um, hmm, oh, all right, there we go. All the existing stuff on the net, all the existing bumps in the network um, scaled down because I just had a much huger jump right there. Um, so it just changed the scale of the graph. All right, so let's try this again. Do a few quick spikes there, and let's see what those look like. Yeah, that I guess it cached them because it, it just pulled it down. Let's try it again here, and let's try another one. So dot org or dot com. Yeah, I can't get a spike as big as that initial. Okay, th this one should do it. I pulled down Reddit. There we go. So that initial query to Google was pretty big, and then the rest of these were pretty small. Subsequent queries to Google and any other site I tried to pull down. Reddit had a ton of info by default. Um, I know this is getting off topic, but we, I think we've mostly covered everything RAM related that we wanted to cover. Um, let's see here. Let's try imgur that that's actually pretty quick all right not a whole lot pulled down by default that's uh i, I guess because i'm not pulling out pulling down all the images all right anyways that's that's basically what i wanted to show we have this really neat looking cpu graph and this really boring memory graph um say if i just fire up minecraft i i, I don't know maybe this will start using some memory Um, okay, so just bringing up the Minecraft launcher there made the memory spike up a tiny bit. Um, what, what, what if I launch, say, Blender? All right, Blender is launched. Now let's minimize, that should incre right, increase my RAM a tiny bit. Okay, that's kind of disappointing. Well, kind of good that I can do so much with so little, but anyways, that's so that's about it for RAM. Um, so hopefully you found this useful or at least interesting if nothing else you might want to give me a thumbs up um you might want to hit that subscribe button also and uh, hit the little bell icon up otherwise uh, youtube's probably not going to let you know when we come out with a new video um we do have a lot of great stuff coming up and, and we've actually if you want to check our list of videos we've already put out a lot of uh, pretty interesting things some more interesting than others um we cover a lot of great stuff um coding servers hardware software 3D printing, electronics, uh, single board computers, robots, networking, all sorts of great tech related stuff that you're not going to want to miss. So if you, if you want your YouTube feed to uh, you know, be that much more interesting, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button. But more important than any of that stuff, you're going to want to leave a comment down below, especially if you know something that I don't know. Um, definitely let me know, not just for me, but for the next person who comes along and watches this video and reads the comments. Um, leave a comment that for them also. Any, any comments, questions, criticisms, whatever you want to say, I probably want to hear it. So do leave a comment down below. And uh, that's pretty much it for today. So as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.